God's judgment isn't always him outright coming at you or a nation. Sometimes it's him turning away, him turning his face from you, from a nation, letting people have what they desire if it's not him. And, you know, while we're protected in the shelter of the Almighty, uh, you know, imagine how cold it is outside of that shelter, especially in these end times. I encourage you, if you have family or friends, or if you don't have family and friends in Iran, to pray for the people of Iran that they should turn to the Lord and pray for mercy over Iran. In Jesus' name, um, you know, it's not going to stop. It's, it's obviously not going to stop. The shaking of nations, again, whether the Lord... I don't believe that he's outright coming for anyone as far as judgments. I believe he's turning his back to many, you know, and I believe that what he's turning his back to is, is perfectly in line with people that are in higher places that are strategically implementing the beast system, which means that a lot of people are going to be killed. A lot of nations are going to change politically, perhaps even geographically. You know, and it's all structured. It's all puppeteers. You know, uh, there's uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's where that comes from. It doesn't mean that we won't have human enemies. It means that the greater enemy are these unclean principalities that really rule geographical places and they puppet master all the willing people below, you know. So we're going to see a lot of change in the world, of course, politically and geographically over the next 10 years. And I believe, you know, this in this time, just like we saw with Israel and Palestine, you know, the only peace is going to be found at the feet of Jesus Christ in repentance. So I encourage you to pray for Iran. I want to also talk about um, the wise and foolish builders of Matthew 24, which is where I was brought next, which is not coincidental, of course, uh, because Matthew 24 is all about the beginning of sorrows, which is where we are. You know, when in history have you been able to open the Bible and be like, wow, we're exactly right here. It's these crazy times to live in. And the beginning of sorrow says that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there'll be all sorts of things going on. Now, amidst this, the shaking of nations, the counterfeit shaking, which is the powers that be really restructuring the inner, inner workings of this beast system to get it how they want it to be. One world order, one government working on one money, etc. And then there's the Lord who is... You know, I would never claim to know what he's doing, you know, of his own accord. Uh, but regardless, we're going to continue to see an increasing shaking of nations. Nevertheless, his people, the righteous, have never been seen forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. You will be established amidst the shaking of nations. And why is that? You know, I want you to know that what you're building, the greatest of what you're building, often even the fruit, like the fruit of what you're building, the physical manifestation are going to be your rewards that you're going to receive in heaven. Yes, God's still going to bless us for those who freak out when we talk about that. But let's not be so scared of thinking about the next life. Okay, let's start to be more eternally focused and know that I want my I want my heavenly rewards. You know, the Lord has gone before you and made a place for you in heaven. You got your own room. Maybe we'll have rooms next to each other. He's gone ahead and made a place for you. And you're going to receive rewards. So every act of obedience, Holy Spirit's been saying, every act of obedience counts. He sees all of it, especially when you overcome temptation. Oh man, it's like when, you know, if you have like a sports game and you're about to make the big shot and your father's in the crowd, he's like, and you make the shot and he's like, oh, that's like the Lord. Every time you overcome temptation, I want you to know that he's just rooting for you to overcome temptation every time because you can. There's always an out, right? And a lot of you, you're catching on to the schemes of the enemy and you're even catching on to the, the lies of your own flesh, your sin nature, how you can sometimes kind of like, let's be honest, sometimes we can lie to ourselves and, and justify things to ourselves, just like Eve did in the garden. So, you know, good on you. And so in Matthew 24, starting at 24, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Are you the wise man? Are you the wise woman who has built your house on a rock? Good, because the nations are going to keep shaking. You're going to need that sturdy foundation. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. 
yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Who is the rock, my family? Who is the rock? That's right, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. And this is the pride, you know, this is the pride of nations. This is why we're going to see, continue to see so many fall. So many, not even just individuals, we're talking entire countries, entire governments just falling. Pride comes before a fall. And it's like, how long did we think that the Lord was going to, um, you know, wait? Like, we can see the signs of the times. It's like, you know, um, how long did we think that he was going to allow this to go on? You know, without stepping in, without doing something, without making a move to say, hey, I'm coming, you know? So, you know, continue to build that house, make new sections on the house, redo your bathroom in that house, you know, continue to build. Because again, you're not always gonna see the physical manifestation of what you're building here, of every act of obedience, of all the righteousness here on this earth, but you're just stacking up treasures in heaven. And I want you to know that the Lord sees everything you do in the secret place. As you pray in secret, as you give in secret, you fast in secret, as you're not out here trying to be, you know, in your heart, trying to be seen and to be known and to be uh, everyone look at me. The Lord, he hears that, he sees that, and he will reward that here on this earth. Let's talk about rewards here on this earth. Yeah, I want rewards on this earth, hallelujah. So I want to take a look at Psalm 24. I won't make this one super long. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, that's right. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. This is the fruit of your obedience. When the Lord says like he blesses the obedient, this is why it's so important just to be obedient without an outcome. Like don't be obedient for something. Like he's not tit for tatting with anyone. And he hears that in our hearts when we're like, um, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just being obedient for this. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I want this for that. Like I, you know, I'm obedient because I want you to give to me. You know, he hears that. Like we're obedient because that's our best life here. Obedience is our best life here. First and foremost, we're obedient because we love him. All right. We're not like fake. We're not little, um, we're not sugar babies. All right. We're not just like, um, you know, take care of me, whatever, no relationship. Bless me, you know, that's, that's foolish. It's really foolish. Like one day when you stand before the Lord, you're not gonna have to show him a resume. Like, hello, I'm Kelly. I brought my references. Uh, as you can see, I've done many, many good works. I, I went to church. I also prophesied, yes. I did many, many things. I had many leather bound books. I did all these things. Um, no, you wanna stand before the Lord and he's like, I know you, I know you. Hallelujah, you know, and so you love him. So you've been obedient and because you kept it clean in your heart because your hands are clean and your heart's been made pure, which you suffered greatly for and you still have to work to keep it pure, man. Our hearts can go dark or hardened real quick as soon as we step out of his shelter, right? But because of these things, you may ascend the mountain of the Lord because of these things. You may stand in his holy place. That is in his presence. We had a word about this the other day, entering the holy of holies. Not everyone gets to enter the presence of God here on this earth. So let's keep going. Verse five, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him who seek your face god of jacob you're rewarded for seeking him and you're vindicated you know sometimes i think um i'm sorry sorry i felt something in my tooth 
sometimes it's like, uh, you know, I think many are waiting on blessings and vindication, but there's a way to wait wrong. There's a way to wait in vain, you know, and that is to continue entertaining sin once in a while because we can grow weary of well-doing. I'm tired of waiting. And then you get all weird in your heart and you start to like, um, you know, either to backslide, not just even into sin, but in your heart to backslide, to have this secret hidden anger towards the Lord in your heart. This is why it's so important to even, Holy Spirit's been saying, prostrate yourself, prostrate yourself. You know, I never knew that word. And some of my greatest times of worship before the Lord have just been on my belly, truly just on my belly, just like face down. And I feel his presence. Like I can be, I'm, my eyes are closed, you know, but I am in the presence of the Lord. I'm at the feet of the Lord. And that's what prostrate means. <sighs> you know, he rewards that. He rewards that you didn't wait. You waited on him. You weren't demanding vindication. You know, God is a vindicator. But the second you start trying to micromanage him, the second you start trying to like, in your heart, pushing him, this is true. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, in your heart, you're just like, when's he gonna do it? When's he... It's already wrong. Like, it's already wrong for that. That's why you we, we don't get, we have to lead with love because we're so jacked up in our sin nature that as soon as we stop leading with love, we're jerks. It's just we're predicated towards it. As soon as we stop leading with love, we are selfish and we fall, we backslide. As soon as we're not seeking the Lord's face, we're, we're seeking his hand. Like, it's just how we are. So, you know, for you that has stayed not perfect, but steadfast in humility, truly seeking him. Like, he's seen every act and, and he is going to bless you. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their savior and vindication, because you didn't wait for your enemies to fall. Okay. That's wrong. That's wrong. You know, the other day, Holy Spirit said like this, where are the intercessors? And I say it before you, where are the intercessors? You know, we're, we're called to intercede in the Bible. You would see People of God begging God sometimes, begging them, please have mercy on this people. Please don't have judgment on them. And, and sometimes we can be out here like it's one thing, you know, we're pronouncing uh, this is a time frame or a time of judgment. But then it's another thing to be like waiting for people to get their judgment. And then we even go so far, you know, we're, we're, we think we're slick humans. We're like, oh, but I just want them to turn to the Lord. I just want to get them to get their judgment. So they turn to the Lord. Why don't you beg the Lord? Why don't you pray to the Lord that he would bless them with his revelation, with his presence, with a dream of the Lord himself? Like, why don't you intercede for these people that they should fall into the loving hands of God as opposed, as opposed to the wreck, you know, I forgive me, as opposed to the hands of judgment, you know, God has listened to his people before when they have interceded, when they have interceded. He listens. He truly, you know, because it says a lot about your heart. You know, it says a lot about your heart. So never, God is a just God. God does vindicate his people, but you don't need to call him on that. Okay, vindicate me. Okay, justice. In fact, don't. Don't test God. Don't try God. Okay. He's going to do things like he lets you know all that. So you know, his character that he's a just God, but you always have to lead with love because as soon as you come out of that love to be like, all right, now my enemies need to get it. Now you're a jerk <laughs> Now before the Lord. You're a jerk because he's like, but I told you to bless your enemies. And I hear what you're saying in your heart that you're even justifying to yourself that you don't really want them to be saved. You just are mad at them still. You haven't forgiven them and you want me to get them. And now I'm not going to get them. That's what the word says, you know, to leave room for the wrath of the Lord. And if you should take pleasure in that, that now he's going to turn his wrath away from them. Maybe turn it on you. You got to keep your heart clean. All right. And that's about knowing who you are, which is <sighs> formerly a sinner. Okay. You have to know the nature that you're in. Don't ever get so twisted up and thinking, I'm a good person and, and I'm higher. And then, no, you're not. You're just as human as those who you point fingers at. But drop them stones because the Lord hears that. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to keep building. Keep building. It's not in vain. 
And the Lord will bless you here on this earth and he will vindicate you here on this earth for you who walk in humility, for you who have truly loved him. You know, he just goes out of his way because you, you didn't have a sight. You didn't have an eye for vindication. You didn't have an eye for blessing. So he's going to give you those things. That's how he is. Please pray for Iran. Intercede for Iran. Intercede for all of the world. If you have friends or family in Iran, please give them a word, a word from the Lord. In Jesus' name.